Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. So Sneeko recently dropped a new and more thorough response to all of the drama surrounding him and Moist Critical, and I honestly think this response wasn't that bad. I mean, it wasn't even really good, but you know, compared to everything else he said so far, this is definitely the most substantive. Of course, that being said, there definitely is a lot of the content equivalent of spoiled milk within this response. Sneeko is still tripling down on his defense of the movie Cuties, and there's some other stuff in here that I think is quite silly, but I want to take a look at his response and sort of dive into some of his key points. Before we do though, if you could take the 5 seconds that it would take to leave a like and subscribe if you're not yet subscribed, we're trying to hit 400,000 subscribers where I will be doing my face reveal, and yeah, let's get into it. Japan, Japan, a society that has not yet been corrupted by wokeness, training hard, working every day, and seeing the world. But it's no secret that I have a degenerate past. Around three years ago, when I was 21 years old, I went to a swinger party with one of my girlfriends and joked about how traumatizing it was on a podcast. I was cheating on her a lot and I felt bad and I thought it would make us even if we swapped with a couple. I don't do it anymore, I don't recommend it, and seeing how many people call me a cuck for what I thought was a funny story, you should probably not do the same. I tried the lifestyle that the woke mind virus pushes and it ends up being what the woke YouTubers try to shame me for. Kind of ironic. I showed a moment of weakness on a podcast thinking that it'd be a funny experience to talk about and it will continue to haunt me for probably the rest of my career. I think Sneeko misunderstands why people were making fun of him for watching his girlfriend get pleasured by another man. It's not because strangers on the internet care about your relationships and they have an emotional stake in what you do with your girlfriend, but everybody found it funny that you on your streams would go out of your way to attack all of these people on this quote unquote soy boy collage. Sometimes you would attack them for valid reasons, like this guy right here, I know that he tried to get your channel deleted. I I think, you know, you can criticize him for that, but you would also often criticize these people for being quote-unquote soy. You call them like ugly losers and stuff. Your goal was basically to emasculate them and embarrass them, and I'm not saying you can't do that, but when you attack people's manliness and their manhood, while simultaneously being on the public record saying that you've watched your girlfriend get pleasured by another man in the same bedroom as you, you sort of lose your right to critique others' masculinity. Seeing all the hate online, it dawned on me in Japan why have I never had a single negative interaction in public outside every single day? They all shake my hand and ask me for a picture. Not even a little joke, haha, ha, cuck, never. Considering I was trending for a week straight on Twitter with hatred, that must mean two things. One, social media breeds negativity, and two, the biggest haters just don't go outside. Okay, hear me out. I feel like if you hate somebody on the internet who is a public figure, what is the point of going up to them in real life and just telling them that you hate them? Sneeko says he's never had a hater approach him in real life. Well, it's like, yeah, why would they approach you? Just to go up to you and tell you that they hate you? Now you're creating conflict in the real world where this stupid internet bull these rules don't apply. If somebody approached Sneeko as he's trying to eat a dinner and this person just goes up to him and says, hey, I don't like you. Moist Critical owns you, lol lol and he won't leave him alone it's like that guy's just asking for trouble like Sneeko would be totally in the right to either yell at this guy call the cops on this guy or anything because that's not that's now real life harassment you understand so a lot of these people who may not like you will not approach you in person because they don't want to have some sort of like physical escalation or create like a real instance of conflict plus a lot of your quote-unquote haters aren't really even haters they just like find you cringy I feel like when you quote-unquote hate somebody on the internet there's only like a certain level of hate that you can actually feel toward that person because yeah you may dislike them for a lot of reasons but at the end of the day they have no interaction with you personally right like these online figures aren't bullying you at school they're not actually directly involved in your life so the emotional capacity you have to foster hate toward them is probably limited pretty heavily so it's like somebody who's a quote-unquote Sneeko hater probably isn't gonna see Sneeko in public and then clench their fists start grinding their teeth and like actually start to get mad you know voice critical is the physical embodiment of every thing that I stand against. And honestly, no disrespect to him. I don't dislike him. He's just the perfect example of a popular YouTuber that's brainwashed. I used to watch his videos when I was a teenager, just like a lot of my other haters. And today he's everything that I don't want to be when I'm 30 years old. When I'm his age, I don't want to be playing children's video games, playing with dildos for content and using Satanism to be edgy. I don't want to drop the antichrist for fun. What is this? 
please someone tell me what they enjoy about this. I mean, I agree. I think dropping the Antichrist in a music video is whack. I didn't see him do that. I don't know why he did that. And that's not something that I'm going to sit here and support. But everything else that Sneeko just said is framed pretty inaccurately. Like, I don't think Critical just wakes up at noon and plays video games till he falls asleep. I'm not going to sit here and meat ride Critical, but I mean, he uploads once a day, sometimes twice a day. He garners millions of views on every single one of his videos. And with all of his other endeavors, he's probably making over over three million dollars a month and yeah he does some gaming content but he's not the sort of like fat redditor disgusting gaming caricature that you're trying to paint him as he's not a soy boy at the end of the day right i mean this guy goes to the gym he eats healthy i, I think he's a nutritionist he's a hard worker he uploads a lot he makes a lot of money so i'm just not sold on your sort of like description of him as this loser gamer i don't show these clips to tarnish his image but to show you what he's presently promoting I do not promote my woke past. I grew up online. Of course, I've made many, many mistakes. My message today is to follow God, work hard, train hard, ban porn, stop gaming, and see what's possible with your life. And I don't think most of that is antithetical to what Critical promotes. I mean, am I missing something? Does Critical like hop on the channel and say, hey guys, today I'm gonna show you the best porn to off to. I also don't think that watching Moist Critical is going to make people think that their life is worthless and that they can't achieve much. And here's the thing, I agree with Sneeko that there are plenty of YouTubers that sort of promote this message. YouTubers that I've even reacted to that spread a genuinely bad message, but Critical just isn't in that boat, I don't think. Obviously, like I mentioned, the Antichrist stuff was just like really weird and I don't support that, but it's the first time I've ever seen that. I criticize Moist Critical so much because he actually released a video that accidentally changed my entire worldview by slandering my now close friends at Fresh and Fit. You don't have to ask what Fresh and Fit stand for, it's in the name of their show. So for everybody watching this, what does Moist Critical stand for? What does he believe in? Do you know? I don't. I've watched him for years, I cannot tell you what he believes. How have you reached a point on the internet where you could have 10 million subscribers as a commentary channel and have no basis of commentary? This I just don't understand. Is Sneeko saying that Critical doesn't have like a moral foundation to operate under when he's making his videos? Because I don't think that's true. If anything, I would say Critical is actually one of the most like morally consistent people on the platform, especially when you consider how long he's been on the platform. Critical is sometimes the first person to discuss objectively bad things that are happening on the internet that nobody else is discussing, bringing awareness to like niche wrongdoings that would otherwise go under the radar. So I think in that case, he has a lot of morality to stand under. The only thing more pathetic than a guy who calls himself an alpha male. In that video, Moist Critical called Fresh a virgin incel loser, the same insults that I get. He insisted that men can't be with multiple women because Fresh, honestly, isn't a traditional Chad. There is no reality in the entirety of the fucking multiverse where this man has slept with one woman. Fresh was just telling a real story about how he pulled three girls in one night and he actually verified it, but Moist Critical didn't correct it. This is when I realized the brainwashing in its purest form. Fresh knows he's an average looking guy, but he's known all over Miami as a playboy. Moist Critical just can't comprehend that somebody like Fresh, who's the same age and on the same level of attractiveness, can be with beautiful women because instead of networking, working hard, and looking fresh, he's playing with dildos and video games. This is the lie sold to keep you depressed. The world is out there for you to conquer as a man, but the 1% provide us with so many distractions to gatekeep it for themselves. I criticize Moist Critical because he makes millions of dollars selling that lie. Moist Critical is a YouTuber. I am a YouTuber. We make content that people can watch when they have free time throughout their day. Maybe they're on a car ride, maybe they're on the train, maybe they're eating, maybe they're bored, who knows? Nothing that me or Moist Critical post is, you know, made to distract people from the beautiful world around us. As a matter of fact, I try to advocate for people to go out there and, you know, go to the gym, meet new friends, enjoy this beautiful world that we have. I can only speak for myself at the end of the day, but I'm going to assume that both me and Moist Critical and most YouTubers just post content because we want something for people to enjoy when they have free time throughout their day. YouTube videos and social media should never be a replacement for real life. I know social media addiction is pretty bad, and it is true that people do end up replacing their real life with social media, and it's a problem that should be fought.
thought, but I don't think individual content creators are responsible for like mass social media addiction. In Japan, there is no wokeness, there is no LGBT trans nonsense, and society is civilized. Somebody spills over their bag and everybody comes to help them out because they see each other as extended family. There's no culture war. Okay, this has nothing to do with his response or anything, but Japan does look pretty sick, I can't lie, I wanna visit. If anybody in my audience has been to Japan, just tell me like what's good, where do I go? It seems very beautiful and there's a pretty rich culture there, I'd like to visit. There is a life outside of the woke degeneracy, and that's why I will continue to defend the movie Cuties. And there it is. Oh, go on. You were, you were doing pretty okay, Sneeko. What's up with the... Why are we doing this now? Until Moist Critical decides to debate me about it. Nobody who hates the movie Cuties has seen it. It's about an Islamic family that moves from West Africa to France, a woke country that's literally on fire right now, and the daughter of the family gets corrupted by TikTok and starts dancing provocatively and leaves her Islamic values behind. She goes from a good Muslim girl to a degenerate wokey, lying, twerking, and fighting, and it blows up in her face and her family's disappointed, and eventually she reverts back to Islam. I like that movie because I see it as another version of my life. I started YouTube at 11 years old, and following the trends of social media before God led me to complete degeneracy. And I think you can do all of these things. You can follow God. You can find good in the world without supporting a movie that actually puts children in sexual situations. Now, I understand what he's saying. He agrees with the message of the movie, but the movie itself, what it does in order to prove that message is, you know, sort of abuse children. I don't know why I said sort of. I mean, yeah, it does straight up abuse children. But rejecting these values, I have found a new direction, purpose, and meaning for my life. A lot of the hatred is justified. I should not have been attacking the people in the soy boy collage as much as I was, but I held a lot of resentment because they actively tried to get me banned on YouTube. They encouraged their followers to go and report my page. They celebrated when I was canceled for telling the truth. Hey, this is not going to be a normal video. Today, I want to briefly talk about the content creator Sneeko and ask YouTube to ban him from the platform. They publicly tried to ruin my life's work, destroy my income, all because they disagree with my worldview. I don't want to attack people anymore. I would love to debate them and challenge their ideas, but they would rather make documentaries deep diving into my past and my only existence on a platform that I'm banned on and grew up on is only hatred. You look up Sneeko, there's no more of my videos. It's just people saying that my life is over, insisting that I'm a bad person. So the only option now is to be a force for good. And let's be honest, there is a clear pattern with the people that hate me. I don't say it to be cocky, but I am tall, I'm good looking, and I'm successful. This is why the number one criticism is wanna be alpha male Sneeko. Whoa, this alpha male, it's rooted in jealousy and the idea that masculinity is a bad thing. I don't think I'm an alpha male. I've never once called myself that. I promote the ideas of masculinity because it is so desperately needed right now. Being completely vulnerable, all this attack online has been difficult. But if Allah wills good for someone, he afflicts him with trials. And I have to be better now. I'm officially retiring the soy boy image. I forgive everybody who advocated for my cancellation or made documentaries about me. And I'm ditching my attacking style of streaming. And I apologize to Moist Critical for showing a picture on stream of you and your girlfriend. That was not very Christ-like. I'm sorry. I mean, it's ultimately up to Moist Critical if he wants to accept Sneeko's apology, but, I mean, just viewing this apology as somebody who is not really involved, he seems genuine. I don't think he's being disingenuous. Obviously, there's a big incentive for him to apologize right now with all the hate that he's getting, but I, I, I don't know, man. I mean, look, he seems like he's being honest. He is talking about following God, and I think that part of that involves, like, self-reflection, becoming a better version of yourself, and apologizing where you've done wrong and I genuinely hope you provide more value to your extremely large audience. The powers of Satan are taking over the West in real time, and I hope that everyone watching doesn't contribute to it anymore. Now that's where he ends the response. In my opinion, and this is my opinion, I think this response gets a passing grade. I don't think it was great. I don't even really think it was that good. You know, when you consider the cuties thing and some of his takes just generally about the internet and how people operate aren't really the best. But he seems genuine about becoming a better person and you know, his apology to Moist Critical seems genuine. So I don't know, what do you guys think? But with that all being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Comment down Boxer if you made it to the end of the video. Follow my social media, his links are all down below and I'll see you guys later. Peace.